Okay, we're just going to introduce some of the sort of typical uh, typical correlations and calculations that you can do using these Chilton, Colburn, J factors. Uh, they are very, very common ways of, of correlating uh, mass transfer coefficient and heat transfer coefficient data uh, and, and relating them to friction factors as, as we noted in the last uh, session. Okay, so, um, so this is... Uh, an example related to mass transfer and packed beds, very common unit operation related to drying, absorption, desorption, uh, uh, catalysis, often done in, in packed beds, and you have, um, of course, the reason that we use them is because they have enormous area for mass transfer. Okay, so a couple of parameters that always come up in these problems is, one is the void fraction, uh, that is the uh, the volume per per uh, per amount of volume in the packed bed uh, that is not occupied by uh, the packing, and typically that number is going to be something uh, greater than zero and less than 0.5. Uh, so the the Reynolds number is also an important parameter uh, that's going to involve the superficial velocity and the packing diameter, not the diameter of the bed. Uh, so so you all know the Reynolds number. Uh, by this point. And the, the basic way that we would uh, find a correlation, for example, in uh, looking for uh, you know mass transfer coefficients or heat transfer coefficients in one of these beds is to uh, look up Perry's handbook, for example, and you'll find uh, correlations listed uh, according to different values of the Reynolds number uh, for, for whether or not it's going to be appropriate, right? So it also will tell you uh, whether that correlation applies to the gas phase or to the liquid phase, right? So this particular correlation uh, is going to be uh, applied to gases uh, flowing through packed beds at Reynolds numbers between 10 and 10,000. And for that range, it gives you the Chilton Colburn J factors, uh, which should both be equal, uh, as, a, as a function of a correlation for the friction coefficient, right? So this is 0.4548 over epsilon times Reynolds number to, uh, to the power uh, minus 0.4069. Uh, so, so now if you're, if you're in that range, you can use this and you can, uh, you know, estimate your, your flow properties, your uh, epsilon, your void, void fraction in the bed, and then that, would, that alone would allow you to estimate mass transfer coefficients and heat transfer coefficients by computing numerical, numerical values of this J factor. Uh, and then backing out uh, using heat capacity, Schmidt number, uh, Prandtl number, those kinds of things that are involved in those J factors, uh, the, uh, the uh, transfer coefficients. So let's just recap briefly what that J factor was. Uh, if we move up in the notes, so, so that F over 2 is now given uh, to you in the correlation in terms of a Reynolds number. Uh, and the void fraction. And then by computing that, uh, we know the J factors. Uh, and by, by relating the J factors through the Prandtl number and the heat capacity, we could get the heat transfer coefficient. By using the Schmidt number and just the velocity of the flow, we could get the mass transfer coefficient. Okay, so that's basically the way these calculations are going to work. Uh, of course, you know, there are, there are different correlations for different ranges of the parameters. Uh, if you're looking at a Schmidt number greater than 165, that would be for liquids flowing through a packed beds. Uh, then you would have, uh, you know, different uh, correlations for different values of the Reynolds number. Below 55, you get the J factor is equal to this. Uh, a, a above 55, <laughs> you get that the Chilton Colburn J factor is this different expression. Okay, uh, and there are even results for fluidized beds, uh, which are, um, you know, the limit where the flow is so fast that it's lifting the particles up as it flows around them. And that gives you yet another uh, J factor correlation. Okay, so, um, so the, the packings, uh, we use an effective diameter uh, that is the, defined as the diameter of the sphere that has the same area as the particle in the packing. And so, you know, you have to go through and estimate the area of all these different uh, shapes, whatever it may be that you're packing your column with. And uh, then from each of those, you can get an effective diameter. And, uh, and that then goes into your Reynolds number. Uh, by the way, this calculation is also uh, going to help you. So then from the void fraction, uh, you can estimate the area 
uh, from the void fraction and this diameter of the packing with the actual area of the uh, particles, you can then go back and you can estimate what is that lowercase a parameter, which is the area of the packing per volume of the bed. All right, so, so you can imagine how all these calculations go and maybe we'll do some homework assignments along those lines. Uh, but this is the basic flow of a calculation, right? So you uh, compute the Reynolds number and the void fraction uh, from the properties of your packing and the flow characteristics and you get a Chilton Colburn J factor for mass transfer. Uh, then you compute the heat the mass transfer coefficient from the J factor. Uh, then you can go through and you can compute this area of the packing. The expression that I described to you comes out to be 6 times 1 minus epsilon uh, over the diameter of the packing. And uh, so from those two properties you can get this A parameter. Now you know that the total mass transfer area in your bed uh, is this A parameter times the total volume of your bed. Uh, so that's the total area for mass transfer. And then you know that the, uh, the overall mass transfer rate multiplied by the cross-sectional, the, the area of your, of your bed uh, is going to be equal to some mass transfer coefficient times area times the log mean concentration difference. Uh, that log mean concentration difference is the uh, concentration driving force uh, at the entrance of the bed uh, minus the, or, sorry, and it involves the concentration driving force at the entrance of the bed and the concentration driving force at the exit of the bed. Okay, so what is it specifically? The delta C at location one. Uh, is going to be the concentration at the surface of your packing minus the concentration in the bulk fluid that's flowing past the packing particles. And uh, then you do the same calculation over here at the other end of your bed and then plug it into this expression. That would give you the log mean concentration difference, uh, the driving force uh, averaged in this log mean way uh, along the whole bed. Okay, so um, so then the last step is that you you compute then this uh, this total rate of mass transfer in moles per second uh, is equal to uh, the volumetric flow rate times or well this is a volumetric flow rate because it's a velocity multiplied by a cross sectional area uh, multiplied by the um, by the concentration. Uh, at the, the two inlets, right? So, so that's going to give you an equation then that allows you to determine the unknown exit concentration. For example, in a typical homework problem, that would be what we would be computing for a given uh, length of bed, uh, packing properties, and uh, flow characteristics. Uh, if the inlet is this much and uh, the, the interfacial concentrations are, are some given amount, uh, what is the outlet um, concentration leaving the bed uh, would be a typical question. Okay, so um, if we walk through a specific example uh, using this example, in this case from Gene Coplis' textbook, we have benzoic acid spheres packed into a column. The diameter of the packing is pretty easy to estimate in this case because there are already spheres. Uh, so it's 6.375 millimeter packing. Uh, the void fraction is uh, 43 or 44%. Um, consistent with random packing of spheres and uh, and the diameter of the bed now this is not the diameter of the packing is much larger it's uh, a a um, a uh, point point zero six uh, six seven meters across that gives a uh, a volumetric velocity uh, volumetric flow rate uh, that is 5.5 .5 times 10 to the minus 7 meters cubed per second. And the, we're told that the inlet concentration is pure water uh, at 26.1 degrees C. And the, the total packing, the total area uh, for mass transfer in the bed then is going to be given by that A parameter. Remember this was uh, this was this formula right here. So you have the little a is 6 times 1 minus epsilon over dp. Then you multiply that by the total volume of the bed. Uh, and, and so that's uh, given to us, that result, uh, the total area of the bed is given to us as uh, 0 0.1198 meters squared. Uh, okay, so uh, so we have this, this inlet concentration and uh, we have, you know, we can look up properties 
uh, that we need to compute this Reynolds number. So we have the viscosity of water, we have the density of water, uh, and uh, we can then get that the Reynolds number uh, with the diameter of the packing uh, is going to be 1.150. Uh, we also are going to need to know the diffusivity of benzoic acid. Uh, and the kinematic viscosity of water, which we've already basically given the properties needed to compute. Uh, so that uh, diffusivity of benzoic acid, remember all the stuff that we learned back in chapter, uh, chapter 5 uh, for looking at diffusivities, we can scale that to a new temperature uh, as needed. Uh, and so the diffusivity is just 1.25 times 10 to the minus 9 meters squared per second. Okay, so that now gives us the information that we need to compute the Schmidt number. Okay, so our Schmidt number, notice, is a is liquid phase mass transfer here, and it's uh, on the order of a thousand, right? So that's what we should expect. And uh, so now using the correlation that we had, right, we have a spherical packing, we have a liquid flowing around it, we can go back up uh, to this list of results and look for what we have, right? So there the Schmidt number is going to be too low. We are definitely above 165. Uh, our Reynolds number was on the order of 1, so we should be using this result. Uh, that's our chilton colburn j factor. Now that's going to allow us to compute a mass transfer coefficient for this problem. Okay, so, so we come back down here. Uh, there's our chilton colburn expression. Uh, we can plug in the numbers, the Schmidt number, the, uh, uh, sorry, the Reynolds number and the void fraction give us 2.277. That is the numerical value of JD. Now, JD is related to the mass transfer coefficient uh, in this way. Uh, so that gives us uh, 4.4 times 10 to the minus 6 meters per second for a mass transfer coefficient. Uh, we now want to go in and uh, and use this log mean driving force. Uh, so so what are we doing? We're setting up a mass transfer. Uh, we're setting up a mass balance that says the volumetric flow rate through the bed times the change in velocity or ch sorry the change in concentration. Uh, what's flowing out minus what's flowing in. Uh, this is the amount of benzoic acid uh, coming uh, coming into the fluid and then leaving the bed. Right. Uh, this is how the benzoic acid gets into the fluid, right? It's telling you that the total, cro the total area for mass transfer multiplied by the mass transfer coefficient that we just computed uh, multiplied by the log mean driving force uh, from the beginning of the bed to the end of the bed is the rate at which benzoic acid should be coming into the bed. Uh, so over here you have uh, moles per second uh, benzoic acid going into the fluid uh, in the bed, and over here you have moles of benzoic acid leaving the the packing uh, at the end of the bed per second. Right. So this is a this is a, just a standard mass balance uh, here in this equation. Uh, the log mean concentration driving. Uh, force here is, is kind of complicated, I guess. Uh, coming into the bed at the inlet, we have zero. Uh, coming out of the bed at the exit, that's our unknown. We don't know that. These interfacial concentrations are nothing more than the solubility of benzoic acid uh, in water. And so there's, there's some algebra to do here. Uh, might be a good time to press pause and follow through and see if you can uh, see if you can follow all these steps. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, we can use this equation to solve for the concentration at the exit of the bed, in the, in the fluid at the exit of the bed. And so uh, doing that calculation gives us the concentration leaving of benzoic acid, leaving the bed is 2.84 uh, moles per meter cubed. Okay, so that's a, a little example calculation using these chilton colburn j factors to compute mass transfer coefficients and to solve mass transfer problems.